Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. And in this tutorial I want to look at cropping an image into a shape or text and it can be done in, a, in a various ways. And this all came about because on the face on the Fans of Serif software page John Harris made a comment about Affinity Designer not being able to do crop to shape like you could in Photo Plus Draw Plus. People made some comments saying that it could be done and Eric Rush pointed us towards a video showing you how to do it made by Af um, Affinity Revolution. Um, if you go to YouTube and do a search for Affinity Revolution you will find this page where they made many videos for the Affinity Photo and I believe Affinity Designer as well although all these ones here all seem to be for Affinity Photo um, their photo is uh, their tutorial is very good and well worth watching but it only really shows you one way and doesn't really elaborate that much which is what I want to do with what I'm going to try here and before I do that let me just go to Photo Plus and show you what was meant by doing the crop to shape now the elliptical selection tool has been selected I will just hold down the shift key to draw a circle move it into position come to the image menu and then crop to selection so it will crop to that circle and then that can be saved right so to do a similar thing in affinity photo and designer because it does seem to work pretty much the same way in both is um, I'm going to do three versions in Affinity Photo and just basically quickly show you it can be done in Affinity Design afterwards. So first thing we need to do is to draw the circle shape. It doesn't have to be a circle, you could pick any of these shapes that are available here. And but we will stick with a circle and I will press the shift key just to keep it as a perfect circle. Now you if you do this you'll pretty much be like mine it will fill it in with whatever is the foreground colour which is white. Um, but just underneath the colour selectors there's this little circle with a red line going through it. If you click on that it will remove the colours. I must admit I've often wondered how, what the point was of that and I've finally found out a good use for it. So now you can see what will be selected. So I can come to the move tool and select that and then I can move this into a position that I want it. I could also resize by using the corner nodes or the nodes in the middle but I will leave it at the size it is. Now what we need to do, and this is what Affinity Revolution did in their video, is to click and drag this layer up onto the ellipse layer without moving it above the ellipse layer. You want to make it part of the ellipse layer. And to do this we just need to click and drag this up to this ellipse layer. But bizarrely, I've found that if I click and hold here on the left hand side and move it up, it doesn't seem to work. If I click over here nearer to the padlock and click and move it up, and as you can see, as I get to the right point, the background will disappear. And if I let go, that will now be grouped and sort of hidden underneath in that layer. So this is the result that we were after. So you can now save this image and 
remember to export it as a PNG file because that way you can save it without the background in fact you could even probably crop it and lose some of this background here that you don't want so that is how Affinity Revolution did it in their video and I now want to sort of expand on that slightly so I'm going to come to this image and we are going to do something similar pretty much similar let's, uh, let's try a different shape this time let's try the um, let's try the heart shape so I'll just draw a quick heart shape here again I can lose the color by clicking on that little symbol below the foreground and background colors I can again once again move it around to where I want resize if necessary and then rather than dragging the layers here you have the options um, with the edit, um, from the edit menu but this time what you need to do is to highlight the background layer go to edit and cut which will remove all the pixels from that layer but they are sort of stored in memory so you now only got the one layer which is the image of the heart shape or whatever shape that you've picked and then you come back to edit and you want paste inside you can either do it this way or the keyboard shortcut is control alt and v so you just click on that and that will paste all the pixels from memory which was the which was the background layer and it will insert it inside that shape which has this very same result in the fact that you now have that background layer as part of the group with the shape that you've picked so it's, it's exactly the same result but one you can do it by just dragging the layer which is probably easier or you can do it by the edit menu and the keyboard and the last one I want to show you using this image is using text so I'm going to select artistic text and this is Walton Pier so I'm going to just type Walton which is a bit big so what I will do is just reduce the size slightly make it a bit bigger that way make the text a bit bolder I think so I can get more of the image there we go All right, so this is much like when we're using shapes, but I'm just going to click and drag from the right hand side of this layer and move it up. And there you have the text which has got the image inserted. Again, I could have done it via the edit by cutting the background out and then paste inside so both versions work the same way be it text or be it shapes so if I go to Affinity Designer this works in the same way so I will select a shape and and this already has either already have it as a blank so you can see this through but if it is colored you can just click on that symbol to lose the color and you can resize to suit move use the move tool and then like it is in 
affinity photo just click and drag it up until the background disappears and then let go and there you have the image inside a shape so hopefully this clears up any thing that may have been missed out from the affinity revolution video um, and it answers the questions that were asked in the Facebook group. Thank you for watching and goodbye.